Good morning. I'm going to do a video about the quick links. We have Judy's laughing at me. <laughs> Stop laughing, Judy. <laughs> it's because I'm wearing this camera. You know, my, my other camera doesn't have real good sound. So this is going to be for my close ups and for better sound. So anyway, so we can get past that. But uh, this is about the screw links, quick links. Uh, Melian, I don't even know actually how to say that. Um, M A I L L O N. They're made by Petzl. They have a stamp on them so that you know exactly what their load ratings are. Um, and there's a lot of discussion about them and their use. And I just want to give some thoughts about how I use them. I've been using them for years and I love them. I use them a lot. And I use some other things too, including. Now the singing tree, tree, singing tree quickie. I like that, but I'm gonna have a discussion of, about this and <clears throat> try to address some of the issues that have come up with their use. This is um, a uh, galvanized. Actually, nope. You can tell. You can tell if they're stainless steel. There's different types. Um, this is a galvanized or zinc plated uh, number eight pear shaped quick link screw link. This is a number nine. Notice the opening on these is about three quarters of an inch. It um, makes it very easy to get a climbing line through there. This one I'll open that up and you can see how wide that is, but more than the climbing line, um, more than the climbing line is uh, putting some other things in there. But uh, so this is a number eight, that was a number nine. This is a delta link. This is a number 10, they call it. So it goes from almost five sixteenths to three eighths to say uh, 17 sixteenths in size. One of the major discussions is tightening this screw down and how much force that takes to tighten. Uh, Pestle has documented how much force that takes. And for example, on this eight millimeter quick link, it takes about three or Newton meters, which for us on this side of the pond equates to about 2.2 foot pounds. A foot pound is about 75% of a Newton meter. So that takes about 2.2 foot pounds to do that. The nine millimeter takes four and a half uh, Newton meters to do that, or about 3.3 pounds. The 10 millimeter, say the Delta link, that takes um, considerably more. It takes seven um, Newton meters, and that's going to be about 5.2 foot pounds. What's a foot pound? If I take, let me put my glove on, if I take two 16 ounce throw bags, so about two pounds, and if I take a stick that's a foot long, 12 inches, I'm going to get foot pounds. So if I lift this up and hold that up, I am now exerting about um, two foot pounds if I can keep the bag on. All right, so let's see, let's see what that looks like, how much I can actually exert. So what I've got, what I've got is um, a, a universal joint on a torque meter. And this universal joint is about, maybe even a little smaller, but about the same size as the nut on that quick link. So I'm not a weightlifter, I'm not any beefy guy, but let's see how many um, pounds, or better yet, Let's see how many uh, Newton meters I can apply to that. So right now, I'm reading out Newton meters. 
And I'm going to grab this just like I was. When I tighten these down, I tighten it as best I can. When you get tightening this down, it'll be in a position like that. And I'll wrap my fingers around it and I'll put some tension on it that way and this way. And I'll do it as tight as I can with my hands. So, did we see that okay? So now I've got this meter set to um, Newton meters and get my wrench going the right direction. I'm going to see how much I can put on this by giving this a twist just like I was doing it on the quick link. So there was 4.4 Newton meters. So actually about one and a half greater than the three I needed in order to tighten that pear-shaped link. Now how much can I put on here in a max? I'm going to put it in the peak mode. All right, so I'm going to put this in peak mode and see how much I can do There's 5.1. So I'm not getting enough really to do a 10, mil 10 millimeter um, delta link, but I've gotten enough to do the pair link. All right, so this is a small wrench that goes with me all the time on the saddle. It's 1.6 ounce. I use it for adjusting my rope runner, or whatever else, or taking the quick link apart if they ever get tight and I'm up in the tree. So I'm gonna put that on this, um, torque meter and see how easy it is there's well let me see I get it back to peak there's peak there's all the way up to 13.7 so it's really easy with this very small wrench to get a, enough torque that I would need for any of these quick links I think some people have the impression that this is the kind of wrench you need to get the kind of, kind of torque you need on a quick link. I'm afraid with this kind of wrench, with this kind of torque, you're gonna do more damage to that quick link than, than is needed. It doesn't take that much. It really doesn't. The uh, quick links, again, this is probably my favorite. It's the smallest. Let me cover a couple of shapes. It's almost the same it's almost the same um, gauge as a carabiner would be. This is the smaller of them. This is, this is the nine millimeter. And you can see the shape that I've put up here as far as in comparison to the curvature of some common uh, carabiners. Why that is important is because I often use a pinto with these. And this is the nine millimeter and I was, I was fumbling with it a bit. Um, and it is, it is a little bit harder if you're trying to put it on a pinto pulley. I don't use these that much. I use the smaller one, but you can see it's real close to not fitting. When you put it on, you just gently give it a little tug and then it, it goes on. And to get it to come off, again, you have to give it just a little bit of a gentle tug and it'll come loose. But that's the bigger one. That's the nine millimeter as opposed to the eight millimeter you gotta have it all the way open, as opposed to the eight millimeter that goes on and off really easy. There you go. Just have to open up. So that that's a little harder with the nine, a little harder with the nine millimeter. You'll notice with the eight millimeter, and like I said, if 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 you're concerned about the strength and the minimum working load on these is greater than the climbing lines, it meets the ANSI standards, and if you really want extra strength, get the stainless steel. 
they're they're not that much but this actually goes on the pinto uh, really easily just because of the smaller diameter so the shape of that right there and and how that looks with is that okay the shape and how that looks with the pinto is very similar to the shape and how it looks with a carabiner. The curvature where the pinto connects with the carabiner is about identical. And again, what I like is it's so easy to get it on and off and it's allowed to seek whatever center is available when you're or is needed when you're pulling it on the line all right so let me talk about using let me talk about using these as an anchor a lot of times um, I'll judge the length of my SRT climbing line and so what I'll do is I'll set an alpine butterfly and try to make that eye fairly tight so it holds the orientation. This is uh, a little carabiner I use for SRT redirects. But it makes it, if, if that was coming through on a throw line, it makes it easy to have a nice wide opening for that to clear when it's going in and out. When I send it up and set an anchor with it, and I've tightened to the correct amount and then you send that up and say this is say this is my anchor there's absolutely no cross loading on that in fact in, on this particular uh, size limb that's not even touching I could put weight on there and that's not even a touch touch the uh, side of the side of the limb even on a smaller anchor yep. And you can't see that. Even on a smaller anchor, I'll show that from here. Even on a smaller anchor, it's in this case actually, it's not touch again, it's not touching at all. It comes off of this knot. It comes off of the bite of that alpine butterfly. And you can see, I mean I could I could load that up and it's just right now it's not touching because the, the climbing line keeps it away from the so there's not much of an issue with uh, cross loading. Now this can become an area of discussion. Some people find it unacceptable. It works for me. But I can also put that pinto pulley in this configuration. Once again, it goes up and I really don't have, this is not even touching. And depending on how horizontal this branch is, I can move back and forth and you can't see it but I can move back and forth and that pulley will seek a center so nothing on the pulley is getting cross loaded everything's directly loaded down the quick link and the advantage of this is for those retrievable redirects when you're trying to pull a redirect and you've got that pulley there it makes it go a lot easier. Now another option to that, if people are uncomfortable with how that looks that way, That's another option when it comes to setting that. I'm gonna pull my camera up a little bit. And again, you can see that the, the Pinto's not touching anything. It's completely clear. There's no cross loading on anything. Um, and once again, you have that great advantage when you're trying to pull out a redirect of having the pulley there. I had another thought too. It, none of this is really fair without uh, a mention 
of uh, Chris Coates Texas Tug. If you're not comfortable putting a pinto up here and you want your alpine butterfly directly through your climbing line or if you're going to use a quickie or if you're going to do something else, you can do the uh, Texas Tug which provides a fair lead from your redirects uh, when you're trying to pull that cinch canopy anchor out of there. But you can do that also with the, uh, with the screw link, uh, same way you would use it with a uh, carabiner. And the nice thing about this wide opening is that it's easy to get it really is easy <laughs> well, you know this is the this is a little bigger one it's kind of harder take that off and go back to the smaller ones because that goes on and you have to be in just the right position it seems like to be able to get them to go off that can be that can be a little frustrating that went on pretty easy didn't it no It's being kind of a bugger to get it off. All right, so how did I get that on? This is why I don't use the bigger one. Can't go that way. It has to go this way. And it went on pretty well, didn't it? Just kind of fell on when I did it. Trying to recover a uh, redirect or pull your line out of the tree. So I talked about the sizes, the shape, using it to set to carabiners, the size of the opening. Um, I talked about how strong they are, what their rating is. Uh, that they have, they meet the ANSI standards. I read the ANSI standards. I demonstrated the force that it takes with a torque meter. Um, anything else? Just got to show you guys this. I don't know if anybody else has one of these. This is a low rigging <laughs> tool <laughs> just to make you all a little jealous. <laughs> Anything else? We good? I guess we're good. I don't know. <laughs>